Are you learning how to put central lines in? If you are, I've got 10 tips for you. I asked, through a Facebook group I'm part of, for top tips for putting in central lines from a lot of advanced critical care practitioners who were all quite experienced at this task and I got some good answers. So let's work our way through those top tips. Number one, preparation, preparation, preparation. Be really, really fussy about the way you lay out your trolley. Make sure you've got everything just so. To be quite honest with you, preparation is probably, for me, the most important part of the task. And the preparation can sometimes take longer than actually putting the line in. And as you can see from some of the comments here, they're in complete agreement with me. So preparation number one. Number two, positioning of you and the patient. Make sure that you are comfortable. You don't want to be squeezed in behind the bed. You don't want the bed to be too high or too low. You don't want to be reaching for things. You don't want to have things getting in your way. They're just going to make the task even harder. So make sure that you're well prepared. Make sure that your positioning is right. Make sure the patient's positioning is right. And hopefully, like my colleagues here, you'll be set and sorted and the whole process will be a lot, lot easier. Number three different size syringes for the different processes you're going to take part in. So you're going to have a 5 mil syringe, a 10 mil syringe and a 20 mil syringe. The 5 mil syringe is going to be for giving the local anaesthetic and that's very important. You need to know which of your syringes has the local anaesthetic in it. And another tip as well as what Alan said here, another tip from me is that once you've finished with your local anaesthetic that goes as far away from you as possible so that you're not tempted to pick it up by mistake. You're going to have a 10 mil syringe which is going to be full of saline to help you flush all the ports and then you're going to have a 20 mil syringe that's going to help you aspirate those ports once you've finished and possibly take some blood cultures if that's required as well. Number four, and this is a great tip from Zoe and it's not something I've done before or I've heard of so you can see we can all learn because I've been doing central lines for many years now. But number four is put some saline into the syringe you're going to be using to aspirate from as you put your needle in. It relieves some of the tension in that syringe so you're not pulling against the syringe, you're only pulling against the resistance of the patient's vessel hopefully. So that's a top tip and one well worth remembering. Number five, and this is from Carol, and again this is one that I hadn't encountered before, but before you start the procedure, dip your thumb into a bit of saline, obviously with your sterile glove on, dip your thumb into a bit of saline and that will make feeding the guide wire much easier. The problem is with a dry thumb, and I've found this many times, is that feeding the guide wire, your finger just slips off the guide wire and the guide wire doesn't work, move. But as Carol says, dip your thumb in a bit of saline first and that gets over that problem. So that's a great tip. Number six, Hannah says, Put a fluid bag under the patient's shoulders, especially the ones with a short neck. It just helps extend the neck slightly and hopefully make the process much easier for you. So get that bag of fluid under the patient's neck. Tip number six. Number seven. When you've got that wire in, you need to view it on both planes with your ultrasound, so short and long axis. And this is Alison, Sean and Sadie have all recommended this, and it's something that I always do as well. You need to be sure that your wire is where you want it to be before you dilate it. If you dilate it and you're in the artery, that can get quite messy. So number seven, view your wire in both planes. Number eight, as Alan says here, routine. Do everything the same way every time. Get your kit set out the same way, put your clothes on in the same way, get your patient organised in the same way, get yourself a top routine going so that everything becomes second nature. If you do everything the same way each time, then hopefully you won't go wrong any time. So that's number eight. Number nine, and this is a tip from me, is that when I take the wire out, I always say quite loudly, the patient's wire is out and I'll put it on the trolley. And this I'll say so that the nurse assisting me will hear me say it. That just saves my panic when I'm clearing everything away at the end of the session and I can't remember, is the wire out or not? Yes, definitely the wire is out. The nurse heard me say it before I closed up. I've made sure that I've double checked the wire is out. 
So that's an important tip. Say it, say it loudly. Somebody's heard you say it. That hopefully ensures that you've done it as well. You don't want to be leaving those wires in there. And then number 10, and I haven't given the name of the person who put this on the Facebook post, but I think this is quite funny. Make sure your scrubs are tied up tightly. You don't want to be wearing them around your ankles because you haven't done so. I've seen that happen once or twice in theatres. I've never seen it happen with someone putting a central line in, but that's a bit of an experience. Tie your scrubs up properly. So there you go, 10 top tips. I found them very useful. I hope you do too. If you want to make any comments, if there's anything that you find useful that I haven't mentioned, put them in the comments below. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe.